the white sail by louise imogene guinea read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson high on the lone and wave-scarred prophyry the promontoried porch of attica past evenfall sat he whose reverend hair down glittered with the breakers volleying foam visioned before him in the level dark aegis of wronged pandion air and king and round about his knees and at his feet in saffrons and sad greens alone bedight sat clustered in dim wayward sidelong groups sheer to the ocean's edge those liegemen fond who with him wished and wept as through the hours of ebbing autumn on the northward hill lies summer's russet ruined panoply knotted and heaped by the fantastic winds haphazard while the first adventuring snow globes itself on the summit so they clung secure among the ranged crevices month after month and wakeful night on night vigilant ever neighbored and o'ertopped with that white presence and the boding sky and aegis prayed o oh, give me back but him my desert palm my moorland midday fount my leopard foot in equal tameless grace swaying suavely down cool garden paths or into battle's maw my lad of athens with bronze and tangly curls atoss to show infancy's golden silken underglow the glad eye dusking blue as is the sea ere fiery sunset tricks it and the lashes in one close sombre file against his cheek in flanked in perpetual trail and droop whereto gleams laughter as through sorrow's pale and anger's self doth tremble maidenly the massy throat the nostril mobile smooth the breast full orbed with arduous large pride as i so oft have marked when from the chase the witness dropping knife swung with the bow heading the burdened company he came i vermile with the wholesome wind out wrestler of storms and perils all high metal theseus keystone of greatness bond of expectation stay of this realm in his strong sinewed beauty dear unto men as tanais bright sanded whose flood harmonious lapses on the ear and makes for hearts yoke wearied thither roaming thrice feastful holiday ah righteous gods forasmuch as i love him and await him who from my youth have been your servitor yield my old age its boon of vindication heaven the happy ship here ere i die still heedlessly the hushed moon bent her brow over the unshorn forest oakery and the dense gradient leaves of thore's pine the cold and incommunicable moon waxing and waning through the barren time that brought not theseus south nor of him sign nor any waif of rumour out of crete whereto a year nigh gone the ship had sped forlorn her decks enshrouded in plucked yew strewn to the mizzen and her oary props and halyards all with blossom myrtle twined and every sail dark as from looms of hell in token of the universal dole and on her heaved anchor and spurred keel cheers none but protests moans and ire attended when from the quay in melancholy weather forward she sobbed on black unwilling wing but ere that going drear one foot ashore theseus with his mild comrades hand in hand the seven maids and boys to bondage sealed lifted his head and met his father's eyes and out of mourning ardour made this oath my people stand not for our sakes in tears no shape of ill shall daunt me i will strike and overcome heaven's favour for my shield and when engirt with conquest i return or never else heist theseus the hitherward that ye may read my heart while yet at sea and know indeed that fate hath used me fair that these your lambs i shepherd and lead home lo i will set upon the central mast the sky sail white white to the hollowing breeze white to that fierce and alien coast and white to your espial from the horizon's brink unto the moored fulfilment of your joy watch you that keep your faith and love in me 
and they believed and watched albeit with dread steadfastly without plaint to soothe the king who taciturn and close and garmented from his nocturnal towered station leaned pining against the unresponsive tide and through his brain with hum processional wheeled memories of theseus deeds of theseus the race he won of yore the song he sang his truth his eloquence his april moods and all his championship of trodden tribes since first he lit on athens like a star from aegeus to the low voice meta wed thereafter to rexenor's daughter spouse childless and by his brethren's guile deposed led by a last mysterious oracle once exiled to trozene wandered down and there accorded aphrodite's grace to whom the sacrificial smoke he raised atonement and conciliation sweet begot to greece her hero and straightway bereaved ithra of old pelops race forsook by destined rumour summoned home but with the auroral kiss of parting he in the spring sunshine on the mellow shore laid his huge blade beneath a caverned rock and both the jewelled sandals from his feet with lofty exhortation bid my son when he with strength inherited of mine can heave this boulder take the sword and shoon and claim in athens me his sire farewell and ithra bided dreaming at the court till from her knee laughed back her own blue eyes and the young boy loosed in sun-dappled groves defiant chased the droning harvest fly or nicked pomegranates with his ruddy thumb ripe from the bough nor would his mother chide but with strange awe hang o'er him worshipping as one that turns with passionate praying lips east to the delian shrine he shall not see save once when he a turtle pigeon pent in wicker work of some swart soldier skill with lisping promise i to nourish it and stroked his plaining bird for one long day but on the morrow ceased his fostering and left his captive cage the tiny gourd of water unplenished then the child bewailed his darling lying stiff and mute and ethra held his innocent hand in hers with solemn lessening for she foresaw remorse an irremediable ache and ruin following him whose manhood swerves to the eased byways of forgetfulness she his hot brows caressing so besought the weeping prince if thou o little son wilt lay hereafter duties on thyself stand mindful of them all thy vows observe be a trust broken but a small small thing its possible shadow slaves this world in woe and ere the dial veer did ethra speak his vanished father's name and gave the charge and led him to the rock and in him fired the aspirations of his godlike race lost quite to former pastimes thenceforth he brooded on her sweet chronicle and oft burst through arcades and vaporous aisles of dawn and stood flushed in the rubious dimpling light straining his thews at sunrise to conjole the granite treasure of those tokens twain with his young heel entrenched in faithless sand his cloud of yellow hair hanging before tugged at the flint or pressed his forward knee with obdurate sieges into its hard side anon with restful rosy stretch of limb plunged to the onset hound-like on all fours beating a moated way about the place where the grim guardian held a fixed foot and ever noon on noon with petulant tears stole back or vanquished to his quiet nooks there would he woo his mother's frequent tale and urge her gentle prophecy that he the kinsman of great heracles should too rise mighty and o'er earth's fell odds prevail wherefore at waking time he plucked up heart to wrestle with the pitiless rock anew season on season patient and behold when the tenth summer's delicate keen dews died from his showward path at last befell one sure petrian tremor one weird shock at his tense vigour and ere twilight failed 
clean to the sea's verge rolled that doughty bulk and theseus in his full inheritance in superb meridian of his youth sandaled the great hilt hard against his breast climbed to his mother's bower aethra laid her lips to his warm signet neck and swooned thereby a prize the destined hour had come and having sped her boy upon his quest drooped like a sun-void lily and so died then radiant theseus journeying overland all robber plagues infesting those still glens physicianed and redeemed all realms distressed thea prodigious cromionian shape apt circeon of arcadia he slew and of his dominant valor overcame the smith god's son who with the mortal mace beleaguered travellers in epidore unburied martyrs fitly to avenge he harsh procrustes bedded limb from limb rent the pine bender on recoiling boughs and him that thrust the labors of his feet headlong in chasms theseus likewise severed by dint of hospitable precedent wide marathonia's lordly bowl he led in garland with hyacinth and rose to the knife's edge at bland apollo's shrine last guided to a grove sabbatical knelt to the chanting white vitalide and in their midst was chrismed and purified from all the bloodshed of his troublous path on to the gate of athens theseus strode docile to aethra's warning that unnamed and with strict privacy he should seek his sire for fifty jealous sons of pallas held the city's sovereignty and overruled their father's childless brother aegeus old whose wrath would rise against the tardy air tumultuous and encompass greece in war therefore unheralded with wary step chancing upon an open banquet hall preceded of his fame came brave arrayed the stranger hero but erewhile a boy and straight along the heaped board glancing down evil medea on her harmful track from corinth unto colchis intercepted this was medea of the fleecemen late her tender brother slayer whose vile spells had promised aegeus princes of his blood stole from him at the beck of that mock moon honor the flood august of all his life for he distrustful of the oracles inasmuch as twas in a flowered no hope now in the season of his utmost need subservient to the sorceress and her whims blasphemed in slackened faith and clave to her and strangling conscience made his thraldom fine with golden incident and public pomp holding by night most sumptuous festival feasting beside her restless and unthroned now theseus knew that wily woman's face who reading her arraignment in his eyes shrank close to aegeus voluble with fear and urged within his palm a craven bowl that he should bid the young wayfarer drain health to medea in one envenomed draught which theseus heard alert past harp and bell past intervening hubbub of rich mirth and sprang to cower the temptress with a word but at the instant sprang her minions too and riot and upbraidings dire began conflict and scorn and drunken challenging then leaped quicksilvered theseus through the fray with love's suspicion kindling in his veins and gained that space before the startled host whence from her coach medea shrieked away limbed and beautiful and clear from front to feet shod with the shrewn aegean and his arm sabred with the one sword that aegeus knew who balancing neath roused memory's ebb and flow among the wrangling merrymakers all clarioned my own and strained him to his breast theseus in those fresh days of his return tarried not idle but with warlike haste bore down on the usurping lords of state juniors and kin of his discrowned sire them ere the morrow dwindled he beheld scattered a shaft from off the threshing floor and aegeus o'er the wreckage of their reign exalted with calm brows in diademed then was the sacred and sequestered prime of liberation the nisan and peace 
when the round heaven in summer's ministrance rolled on its coral axle till at end like to a cloudlet that assails the blue comely and yet with rains in germinate minus and cretan unto athens sent his nimble princeling in a fourth night span the island lad competing in the games won fairly whereupon the envious mob made rude revolt and took upon itself the barbarous dishonour of his death the vengeful minus sailed and raised the town laying the bitter forfeit in this wise athens shall yearly proffer unto me her virgin tribute of patrician seed seven youths and maidens seven as by lot wherewith to feed the ravenous minotaur athens the peerless bowed her ashen head so dragged the dreadful twelvemonth through the realm i of its dearest blood depopulate and losing grasp on life the fourth weak year youngest of all departed full thirteen faltered aboard the deck calamitous and with them theseus best beloved theseus the king's soul born whom last the doom befell but as no sister galley e'er set out to dolores ports predestined in due lapse returning with her steersman went this ship not hopeless now her bravest made his vaunt to thread the maze to dalian and destroy the pampered monster holding harm at bay from the frail flock of athens and to flash homeward to chime of oar compelled waves signalling with the white exultant sail so that i live this thing he said is sworn watch you that keep your faith and love in me such tales of theseus youth his father's mind rehearsed while at his vigil in the night deep pondering on each noble circumstance as a man shifteth through an idle hour anon with hand in light anon in shade the lustres of his one memorial gem and oft the king with a foreboding throw called urging eld's unserviceable sight shines the white sail yet spake the marine ring nay but fantastic clouds low wandering on then the fond voice of aegeus askingly alcamenes yield my sad heart a song rose kind alcamenes who from his birth the king had cherished from a mossy seat the anxious faces turned his happy way and with his pose quiescent lyre in arm breathed forth a simple ditty sweet sustained against the diapason of the sea thy voice is like the moon revealed by stealthy paces thy silver margined voice like the ample moon and free ah beautiful ah mighty the stars fall on their faces and warring world is silent for love and awe of thee my soul is but a sailor to whom thy wonder singing is anchorage and haven and unimagined day and who in angry ocean to thine enchantment clinging forgets the helm for rapture and drifts to doom away but the king hid his brow in both wan hands sighing that song at her beguiling feet out of my brief enslavement did i make the year that theseus on our revel stole it sears me like a brand with fires or past be silent my alcamenes spare it me thou rather thereon sing engird my pain with some thrice gallant catch some madrigal that sets the dull blood dancing thereon smiled making suspense for he was theseus friend half prone beneath his damask cloak with chin hand propped and fixed his dark eyes on the king in trolling of an agitated lay i drowse in the grass to the cricket's elfin strings with boughs and the sun about with bowl and book at the flood tide of my youth in the pearl of springs cydippe's hand in my hair ah horrible thrill once i was rash once i was wrong quick look my heart in thy tremor over the herded hill in clefts of the moss in swirls of the sliding brook 
somewhere the vengeance lurks to defile and kill my arrow back to me somewhere hisses and sings i justly i bitterly justly steady heart there see i laugh as i lie on the brink of the jar yet cling sweet foam and i kiss cydippe's hand through my hair again with swift uneasy gesturing turned aegeus chiding and protested ere the whipped-up courage of that roundel's close cease thereon this is but an ominous song a song of retribution for he thought so retribution dogs my bruised age still still medea's soft and deadly name sings all the leafy splendor of my life and daunts the morrow's bud and if there be a reckoning i must pay for follies past must it be oh not that not now not here and drawing to his height he cried the sail comes the sail from the south they chorused not save the argent flutterings of the shoreward gull and aegeus craving solace urged once more rudilus sing thou what shall heal my soul in numbers honey clear now rodalus the poet too was loyal sentinel a fiery patriot wont to domineer the moods of athens very potent he and flexile throated as the nightingale with all his fingers knit about his knee and head against a hoary pillar raised dream-locked upon the lowest sprayed ledge riddling the unintelligible space void thrones and filmy wakes of fugitives and interstellar agonies of midnight to him the king's voice throbbed a second time rodulus sing thou what shall heal my soul who grave with poesy's most candid mien answered the summons softly sire i cannot the music of my brothers is amiss so mine would be our strings are jangled wrested from their discreet and silvern vassalage snapped quite with languishment for theseus sake i cannot sing but o oh, you holy stars stretching to us your tendrils of high glory tacit compellers of our wayward spirits you domed guardians of this tear-bound earth you rich-wrought visions charioted thousands hail rank on rank through warless cities riding young semispheric moon o burning seven hesper and phosphor blue hour measuring orbs that elsewhere look on theseus speed his penance bide through the watches with us shine excel not and the dense quiet bound them cautiously in his far corner one behind the king at the dumb bursting point of that weird hush with nervous finger twitched his neighbor's sleeve and strove to whisper him with palsied tongue and straight relaxed and smiled but new convinced towards twilight's gracious advent crept in awe with arm extended to his fellow's side and the two thrilled alike immovable each palm down roofed above the frantic eye froze at their posts which eager theron marked piloting his keen sight across the main and smote his bosom with quick smothered groan and breathless gazed and gazed by twos and threes the apprehensive company dropped aghast out on the reeling ragged precipice sparkled and shelled with oncoming tide till aegeus slow divining dupe of hope awoke and knelt him down against his throne faint with thanksgiving and the moments creaked in gyral passage like ixion's wheel spoke on a cursed spoke portending woe but he athwart his lonely pinnacle called like a ghost from walled eternity what of the sail what cheer their lips congealed nothing replied the cruel hour rolled on intolerable arid east-blown wave vaulting on the wave through all her caverns loud far upon olarius boomed the sea then bearded rodalus compassionate spied leaning o'er the crags the frenzied king 
rending his garment to the paling moon and yet evasive of those pleading eyes knotting his arms against his breast downcast adjured him o oh, most reverend o oh, most dear the heart of life is rotten prayer is vain stay up thy soul for lo the sail is black and all the trancid host burst into moan old aegeus like a dreamer muttered i passive and from his brain the fever fell and more than zeus himself he things unseen saw and to unheard choirings lent his ear theseus truth speaking bowed the sky sail white the sail was black therefore was theseus dead in untriumphant state his comrades dead dead the emprise of greece her dynasty ungendered dead the very gods were dead and he alive alive a wind-worn leaf all winter gibbeted upon that bough whence the last fruit was reft oh mockery inert of his own broken heart impelled from the steep solitary trysting place king aegeus like a stone dropped in the sea a wraith of smoke fast driven against a flame yon by the crimsoning east the dark ship moved her herald noises strangely borne ashore joy joy and interlinked o oh, joy o oh, joy athens our mother joy to all thy gates and thunderous firm acclaim of minstrelsy laughter and anthemine and salvos wild outran the racing prow but mute they lay the blinded watchers bent beyond desire wounded beyond this wondrous balsaming yet ever through the trembling lovely light known voice on voice re-echoed face on face uprose in resurrection they were safe and athens hark from her long thraldom free and theseus victor sang and sailed with them the pale unsistered phedra for his bride for whom was constant ariadne cast on naxos where a god did comfort her theseus who when his bark the shallows grazed leaped in the gentle ways for boyish glee gained the thronged highway crossed it at a bound scaling the cliffs and stood among them there clausus and his dear theron and the rest nodding upon the clamorous crowd below but they as soon had turned them blunt away in hot resentment of that false one he o'er brimming with frank welcomes in dismay stricken with sight of unresponsive hands scenting disaster reining up his tongue asked sharply for the king he understood after mad struggle and bewilderment and gloomy gazing on the absent deeps down on the penitential rock he sank all his fair body palpitant with shame syllabine agony aegis aegis ah glory of hellas dead for trust in me life-giver irrevocable friend my father ah ah loving father mine ah dear my father i forgot the sail and the great morn burst on a hundred hills the marigold unbarred her casement bright end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tarpia by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Kurt Trautwein. Woe, lightly to part with one's soul as the sea with its foam. Woe to Tarpia, Tarpia, daughter of Rome. Lo, now it was night, with the moon looking chill as she went. It was morn when the innocent stranger strayed into the tent. The hostile Sabini were pleased as one meshing a bird she sang for them there in the ambush they smiled as they heard her sombre hair purpled in gleams as she leaned to the light all day she had idled and feasted and now it was night the chief sat apart heavy-browed brooding elbow on knee 
the armlets he wore were thrice royal and wondrous to see exquisite artifice whirls of barbaric design frost fixed mimicry orbic imagings fine in sevenfold coils and in orient glimmer from them the very form voluble swinging of gem upon gem and the glory thereof sent fever and fire to her eye i had never such trinkets she sighed like a lute was her sigh were they mine at the plea were they mine for the token all told now the citadel sleeps now my father the keeper is old if i go by the way that i know and thou followest hard if yet at the touch of tarpeia the gates be unbarred the chief trembled sharply for joy then drew rein on his soul of all this arm beareth i swear i will see thee the whole and up from the nooks of the camp with horse plotted out dealt the bearded sembini glanced hotly and bowed as they knelt bare stretching the wrist that bore also the glowing great boon yea surely as over the shineth the lord low moon not alone of our lord but of each of us take what he hath too poor is the guardian if thou wilt but show us the path her nostril upraised like a fawn's in the arrowy air she sped in the serpentine gleam to the precipice stair they climbed in her traces they closed on their evil swift star she bent to the latches and swung the huge portal ajar repulsed where they passed her half tearful for wounded belief the bracelets she pleaded then faced her the leonine chief and answered her even as i promised made merchant i do down from his dark shoulder the baubles he sullenly drew this left arm shall nothing begrudge thee except find it sweet give too o my brothers the jewels he flung at her feet the jewels hard heavy she stooped to them flushing with dread but the shield he flung after it clanged on her beautiful head like the apennine bells when the villagers warnings begin athwart the first lull broke the ominous din upon din with a hail benefactress upon her they heaped in their zeal death agate and iron death chrysoprase barrel and steel neath the outcry of scorn neath the sinewy tension and hurl the moaning died slowly and still they massed over the girl a mountain of shields and the jimmy bright tangle in links a torrent-like gush pouring out on the grass from the chinks pyramidal gold the sumptuous moment won by the deed they had loved her for doing and loathed her for done such was the wage that they paid her such the acclaim all rome was aroused with the thunder that buried her shame on surged the sabini to battle o you that aspire tarpia the traitor had fill of her woman's desire woe lightly to part with one's soul as the sea with its foam woe to tarpia tarpia daughter of rome end of poem this recording and poem are in the public domain white sail by louise imogen Guyney. Read for LibriVox by Karen Malazzi, October 24th, 2017, Massachusetts. The Caliph and the Beggar, 1. Scorner of the pleading faces in the first year of his reign, from the lean crowd and its traces, down the open orchard lane walked young Mahmoud in his glory, in his pomp and his disdain, and beyond all oratory. Music's sweetness, ocean's might, fellow voice from branches hoary. He whose heart is at life's height, who has wisdom, love, and riches, Islam's greatest, dies this night. And he crossed the rampart ditches, blinded and confused and slow, high in palace nooks and niches, clanged his father's shields a row, and their turret, triple-jointed, shook with tempests of his woe. Long past midnight, disanointed, prone upon his breast he lay, warring on that hour appointed. But behold, at break of day, as if heaven itself had spoken, Blown across the bannered bay, over mart and mosque outbroken, came the silver solemn chime for some parted spirit's token. Mahmoud, with free breath sublime, summoned one whose snow locks heaving made the vision of war time. And the red tides of thanksgiving on his lifted brow, he said, 
in thy city of the living, which, proclaimed of bells, is dead? And the graybeard answered, Master, one who yesternight for bread at thy gateway's brown pilaster begged in vain, blind Selene, he, victim of the old disaster. And the vassal suddenly looked on his hard lord with wonder, for those tears were strange to see. 2. Yet again, where boughs asunder held the wavy orchard tent, sun in purpled clusters under in changed mood the caliph went, and a new heard sounds upgather, chidings with caressings blent as the voice once of his father. Haughty heart, not thou wert wise, rich beloved, Selim, rather, Islam's prince in Allah's eyes. Even the meek in his great station, freehold had of paradise. 3. When the plague wind's desolation pierced the Sorva's burning wall, circled with a kneeling nation whom his mercies held in thrall, died the caliph, whispering tender counsel to his liegeman tall. One last service, children, render me, whose pride the Lord forgave, not by our supreme defender, not beside the holy wave, not in places where my race is lay me, but in Selim's grave. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rise of the Tide by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Rise of the Tide A fisherman grey, one night of yore, his nets upgathered, plied the oar, right merrily heading for a haven, while summer winds blew blithe before. He sat beneath his pennon white, his arms were brown, his eye was bright, twice twenty years his breast had carried, a ribbon from Lepanto's fight. A cove he spied at sunset's edge, with pleasant trees and margin sedge, and barefoot went by stakes down driven through shallows wading from the ledge the boat drawn after but behold a check fell on his venture bold he stood imprisoned vainly leading the ropes in whitening fingers old within that black and marshy sound his weight had sunken he was bound knee deep and as he beat and struggled the mocking ripples danced around Long since the wood thrush ceased her song, the summer wind grew fierce and strong, the shuddering moon went into hiding, down came the storm to wreak him wrong. Against the prow he leaned his chin, thinking of all his strength had been, then turned and laughed with courage steady, oh ho, ho, what straits we twain are in, and strove anew, unterrified, but lastly, wearied wholly, cried for succour, since his laden wherry rocked ever on the coming tide. I hear a cry of anguish sore, but straight his love had barred the door. Bide here, the night boats naught but danger. Loud beat the waves along the shore. A bedded child made soft behest, so loud the voice I cannot rest. It is the rain, dear, in the garden the cruel water binds his breast a lamp a lamp some travellers lost but through the tavern roared the host nay only thunder rude and heavy close to his lips the foam is tossed oh listen well my liege and king hark from gay halls this grievous sing strange how the wild wind drowns our music about his head the eddies swing at stroke of three the abbot meek moved out among his flock to speak this word with tears of doubt and wonder i had a dream come forth and seek with torch and flagon forth they sped the fisher glared from the harbour bed the tide from his white hair down fallen all kindly ebbed now he was dead lepanto's star shone fast and good the sea cap wrapped him like a hood his arms were stretched in woe to heaven the boat had drifted so he stood the unavenged he seemed to be then fell each monk upon his knee lord christ the abbot sang awe-stricken 
rest my old rival's soul sang he end of poem this recording is in the public domain Chalus Castle by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Chalus Castle. There sped, at hint of treasure, dug from the garden mould, word to the doughty vessel, thy sovereign claims the gold. Nay, Richard, come and rest it, said Vidomar the bold. Up rose the lion hearted, he locked his armor on, and over seas that morrow around his gonfalon the crash and hiss of battle blazed up and mocked the sun king richard led his bowmen by chaluse dark and high like rain and wreck they followed his flashing storm-blue eye forth peered bertrand de gourdon from the turrets there thereby through morris pikes and halberds the king rode out and in his horse in gaudy trappings his sabre drawn and thin down knelt bertrand de gourdon his strongbow at his chin o oh, shrill that arrow quivered and fierce and awful broke a claim in billowy thunder from all the foreign folk at mighty richard fallen beneath a foreign oak then leaped his english barons converging from afar and loosed the flood of slaughter to the gates of vidomar and seized bertrand de gourdon as clouds and mesh a star they brought the bright-cheeked archer who scoffed not neither feared to the tent ringed in with faces that menaced in their beard but the king's face lay before him in the lamplight semi-sphered the king's self stern and pallid gazed on the lad that day and as if dreams were on him besought him gently say bertrand de gourdon wherefore thou takest my life away to venge my martyr father my foster brethren three in the name of thy dead foemen this thing i did to thee and richard perished sighing forgive him set him free alas for that late loving by seneschals betrayed while yet upon his lashes the holy tear delayed they bound bertrand de gourdon they slew him in the glade alas for noble spirits whom fates perverse befall whence david in his beauty gave healing unto saul the jeering wind beats ever on chaluz castle wall end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Wooing Pine by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. There was a lady, starshine in her look, of lineage fierce, yet tremulous and kind, as the field gossamer that down the wind floats gleamingly from some enfistled nook, and wayward as her beauty was her mind that ever more bright errant journeys took her father's houndish lord she moved among from feud and uproar dewily distraught winnowed her harp of its least pain and brought delights full freshet to a beggar's tongue or spun amid her maids with chapel fort that on a crystal pivot burned and swung but night on night an exile from sleek rest she nestled warm before her half fire low to watch its little wind-borne planets go orbing and from the martyr oak's charred breast in spirit blue flame in quintuple wind glow the tossing leaves prolong their summer zest and ailingly she needs must often sigh perplexed out of her witch and wanted glee whereof some unseen warder kept the key and quell the dark defiance of her eye in patience as a torch dips in the sea and so in brooding went the white days by 
and to the horsemen brave in war's array she waved no token from her latticed house nor yet of princelings bear upon her brows love's salutation but from such as they turned as a shy brook wheels from jutting boughs and in a sidelong glimmer sobs away her sealed sense beheld no man nor heard nor lent its troth to any mortal bond but lived heart full of vital light beyond and with miraculous tides of being stirred lingering though eager till the forest fond winged to its own pure peace this homing bird for sad with rains of unrevealed desire and heavy with predestined glory's beam she to the water-girdled wood's extreme stole from her suitors pleas her father's ire far from their brambly ways to sit and dream and make sweet plaint in daylight's dying fire when one with lilt of her own veins there rose across remote and jasmine pillared space a voice of so persuasive piteous grace that all her globed sorrow did unclose to fragrant helpfulness in that still place and sought in tears the breather of such woes and peering of the level shafted sun evasive listening from a mossy knoll to kindling quiet sank her gentle soul in awe at some high venture to be done as when out peals from fame's coercive pole too soon on ears too weak her clarion burst in the golden air a wide and deep torrent of harmony that with clang and shook might wreck a pinnace on an afric rock and on the ruin foamly or heap bright reparation twas a strength to mock itself with swoons and idle sobs and sleep a splendour hoary pine of kingliest cheer enrooted neath her frilling footfall stood suffused with youth and gracious hardihood sown of the wind from heaven's memorial sphere with the red might of centuries in his blood unscarred and straight against the battling year from whose great heart those noble accents flowed and from the melancholy arms outspread whereon the aching winter long had snowed come sister spouse whom love hath strangely led from bondage come and her most blessed head she laid upon his breast as her abode o oh, wonderful to hearing touch and gaze this was of soul's unrest and spirit's scar solving and healing this the late full star super illumining the hither ways and the old blind allegiance set ajar like a dark door against its flooded rays all intertangled fell their dusky hair in tender twilight's bowery recess and that fair bride of her heart's heaviness was disenthralled in love's lethean air where orchids hung upon the wind's caress and the first tawny lily made her lair dim minions served them in the covert green the squirrel coy the beetle in his mail the moth the bee the throbbing nightingale and the gaunt wolf their vassal to them e'en the widowed serpent on her vengeful trail upcast an iridescent eye serene the last tired envoy from the realm bereaved blew at the drawbridge riding castlewoods the fisher folk along the beach and shards pierced calling the cool thicket sylvan leaved and grandams meagre and road roaming bards shared her sad theme for whom men vainly grieved but lad and lass with parted mouth a bloom who strayed thereby in april's misty prime a vision freshening to the aftertime caught through the rifts of uninvaded gloom a maiden honey-lipped as tuscan rhyme and her young hunter with his sombre plume 
for dynasties though passing bells be told theirs is the midmost ecstasy of june her music her imperishable moon while time that elsewhere is so rough and cold like a soft child flower plucking all forenoon gathers the ages from this garden old calm housemates with them in their forest lone do freedom innocence and joy abide and i as one who into heaven hath died through mortal our ways of melodious moan the boatman sees at dusk from arno's tide the everlasting lover with his own end of poem this recording is in the public domain the serpent's crown by louise emogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by scott kelly said he o diligent rover brown under many a heaven treasure and trophy you carry spoils from the east to the west yet i fear that you passed it over the chief climb out of the seven my wonderland and my island where the chance of a night is best there from the black mid forest past hemlock guards and waiting heard you not the legend where the wide sun winks at noon on the rock ways sharpest horest warily undulating a star dappled serpent hurries with the odorous grace of june over her human forehead red among glens abysmal glitters a crown gold gossamer only a moment's arc crosses the creature torrid flexile palpitant prismal then breaks on the earth a terror spiraling into the dark every day in tomorrow as the foreign old belfries tremble with the hammer hard heels of noon just that instant no more no less and the blue witch reptiles furrow her shape stands to dissemble in the barbed tongue tempts and entices in the fire eyes acquiesce only she was a wily woman whose glory the gods have finished whose handcraft still in ruin whose glee is to snare and kill defier of spearmen and bowmen her empery undiminished but who can overcome her shall bend the world to his will therefore the knights importune to spur throw the jungle's fruity many a lad and a hunter and a dreamer there ventureth for the king tends power and fortune to the slayer of that demon beauty and awards him her crown thrice charmed whose captor can outwit death I ride above storm and censor, and lord it over time and distance, in the maddening sweet assurance of bliss like a rose rain shed. All in a wood path venture, a gallant alert resistance, and a stroke of the steel and circle about that exquisite head. A task for your young drilled muscle, but the other in soft duration. Answered him, Oh, I had once some wild schemes under my hat, some thrill for the same snake tussle, in the heirdom of life, Elysian. Long peace, long loving, long praises, but I've kindled and cooled on them. Ten years have I been a ranger, I have hewn all dread to the center, I have learned to swift our values, my soul is at rest and free. If that be your boon for danger, on a dull, safe youth to enter, thou may cover the Gordon, tis a poor enough thing to me. I choose, might I come in return so, to a cause, a friend, and a foeman, staunch to endure for the rest, but as a moth, or a marigold. Let the philosophers yearn so, the king, bribe squire, and yeoman. Not for my lease immortal, the serpent should be cajoled. To strike her down avenges her slain. But is evil ended? 
the fashion dies the function abides and has fresher scope what is to be won he cringes who would seize were the choice extended for the risk elsewhere of living here only survival's hope i would keep my lot mine purely cast in with the men's forever the transient tempest sooner than the sybaritic calms thou against the cobra surely i would pit my soul's endeavor her crown in its lonely meeting i would scorn to take in alms rather than ease unshaken durance that sloth unhallows once and for all and honor an end what's the forfeit crown if the chance of my short term taken rum plump on the axe or the gallows so my brother's fetter be loosened or one tyrant trampled down why see this diadem's pleasure a turk might sigh to inherit heartbeats thrumming a torpid and solitary chair no call to arms no measure of progress well let him wear it unquestioned i spurn the bauble when i killed your snake last year End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mustache by Louise Emogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly. A friendless pup that heard the fife sprang to the column through the clearing and went on to Switzerland in strife, went grandalaring. Much he endured and much he dared the long hot doomsday of the nations he wore a trooper's scars he shared a trooper's rations warned pickets seized the austrian spies bore the dispatchers through the forces from fallen riders prompt and wise led back the horses served round the tents or in the van quick-witted tireless as a treadle this private wins said marshal lanes ribbon and medal mustache a brave french dog it lay graven on silver like a scholar's who's lost a leg on jenna day but saved the colors at saragossa he was slain they buried him and fired a volley end of mustache nay that were strain to melancholy his immortality was won his most of rapture came to bless him when plumbed and proud napoleon stooped to caress him his emperor's hand upon his head how since shall lesser honors suit him yet ever in that army's stead love will salute him and since not every cause enrolls such little fond sagacious henchmen write this dog's moral on your scrolls soldiers and frenchmen as law is law can be no waste of faithfulness of worth and beauty lord of all time the slave is placed who doth his duty no virtue fades to thin romance but heaven to use eternal molds it mark some firm pillar on new france mustache upholds it end of poem this recording is in the public domain ranieri by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by sonia Ranieri to the lute Ranieri played once beneath the jasmine shade in a June bright bower imprisoned many a Pisan beauty listened velvet eyed with head propped under her gold hair's uncoiffed wonder like the rich sun blooded roses whom the wind overtakes in poses of some marble still delight on the dewy verge of night merrily and loud sang he with the fairest at his knee sky ringed in that garden nest who save sorcerers had guessed whither sylph and minstrel came 
from the awful archer's aim or that glossy pine below lay the city in her woe for her sins as it was written desolate and fever smitten apt ranieri was and young love's persuasion on his tongue and his high erected glance softened into dalliance laughed along its haughty level foremost in all skill and revel steeled against the laws that seemed monkish figments idly dreamed early dipping his wild wing in the pools of rioting with the moaning world shut out with the damsels about crimson girdled in the sun regnant as if he were one for whom death himself was mute so he sat and twanged his lute placid in her novice veil sister claudia told the tale when across the air of june like a mist half risen at noon or a fragrance barely noted a judean vision floated who midway of music's burst pleadingly as if a thirst long a thirst and long unsated sighed ranieri sighed and waited ah the prodigal that heard fell to ashes at the word but with broken murmurings putting by the wreathed strings from the safe and craven places from the fond bewildered faces trembling with the rush of thought with contrition overwrought at a royal gesture down straight to the dismantled town girt with justice chaste and tender to all risks himself to render of all sorrows rude and froward to be prop and cure henceforward by no lapse of irksome duty swerving from the only beauty by no olden lure enticed saint ranieri followed christ said the little nun amen christ who calleth now as then end of poem this recording is in the public domain st caddock's bell by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia st caddock's bell one sailor with wonder thou hearest me moored where the roots of thine anchor be tolling and wailing bursting and failing afar in the heart of the sea a bell was i of pagan lands forged and welded in might and beauty but captured by christian chivalry and set in a belfry by godly hands with chrisms and benedictions three for a fourfold consecrated duty to summon to pray to peal for the fray to measure the hours to moan for the dead to moan for the dead ah me ah me where the wild gold parasites suck and spread where the sea-flower rears her dreamy head in the grots of immortality the cool weird singing mermaids dwell in in the still city with its empurpled air shaken upon the eye from bastions fair of coral and pearl and unbought jasper's glisten i toll and wail i burst and fail ah listen i the holy bell the gift of the lord Llewellyn, now the keel of a cornish ship looms over my prison call from the underworld in mine old despair two they brought me in my virgin fame to the carven minster wonder high close to the glorious sun and sky with song and jubilee and acclaim the fountains brimming with wine sprayed out on the crowd in the chapel porches the viols and harps clanged loud and the slim maids danced the solemn measure ever and aye the same singing behold we hang our bell in the freedom of spring in the golden weather the gift of the lord Llewellyn, redeemed from heathenry and strange shame the lion's strong bell for our service at last led hither flower woven caressed and in christ made willing and tame but ere the pleased stir of the people had died Llewellyn, fresh home from the wars with his soldierly stride climbed 
bearded and splendid in mail and his only young child held up from his shoulder in sight of them all till they cried peal on peal of delight when the rosy babe turned and her lip laid sweetly upon me in benison mild yea sailor and thou that hearest my voice from thy ship thou knowest my sorrow's beginning thou knowest ah me whence my tolling and wailing my breaking and failing afar in the heart of the sea three i served the lord ten years and a day in st caddock's church by the surging bay and housed with the gathering webs and must mid whirring of velvety wings outside in calm and in wind brooding over the tide and the bright massed roofs and the crags array my strong life innocent and just fell of a sudden to ashes and dust and on my neck hotly the demon laid the bare rod of his sway how it befell i know not yet sailor with wonder thou hearest me save that a passionate sharp regret an exile's longing overmastered not seared thought like a pestilential spot and sent my daydreams traitorously back to the place where my life began to the long blue mornings blown and wet to the pyre by the sacred rivulet and the chanting cappadocian no more a christian bell was i for all became which seemed so good vile thraldom in my bitter mood that thrust the old conformance by sullen and harsh to the acolyte i answered of a sabbath night and sprang on the organ's withdrawing peal to shatter its pomp like a charge of steel the good monks puzzled and prayed i trow but against their heaven i set my brow four to me by the ancient triple robed lone torture stair whereby i made a tingling silence a heavy concentric shade the twelve years child of the lord lulin groped with may wreath laden the loving strange child came and my pulses that throbbed at sight of her ten years gone chilled and recoiled at her delicate finger touch guessing along my brazen wrought margin the lord and the blessing traced through the vine through the tangle of star and of sun by her dead father's name by hlulin's magnificent name and even as she stood in the dark the doom and the horror rushed on me i had weakened my soul and they won me i felt the desire at my vitals the unbearable joy that is pain with one mad tigerish spring against the dim rafter i smote the sweet child in my rage i smote her with laughter and the sound like the rain whirled east on the casement died after and i knew that the life in her brain i had quenched at a stroke and flung even my darling of yore down the resonant tottering stair down down to the century door then the swift hurricane the clamouring army thronged up from below my allegiance to claim lean goblins brown flecked like a toad the gnomic horned ghosts imps flickering quarry sprites grim all the din of the dolorous hosts all the glory and glee of the cursed hissed round me and round as a flame and they loosened my hold from the tower and my hope from the hem of the garment of him who could save as they jeered and with speed crashed down past the rocks and the wrecks and the horrible deed was done i was theirs and i gave up my spirit to them five in a mossy minaret fathoms under i am set all the sea shapes undulating at my gates forlorn are waiting all the dreary faint-eyed people watch me in my hollow steeple while the glass clear city heaves oft beneath its earthy eaves so in sorrow 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 yester-even and to-morrow through the eons in a cell hangs st caddock's loveless bell orbit like a mortal's tear on the moony atmosphere bearing the refrain of time memory and unrest and crime thou that hast the world sublime 
i that was free i am lost i am damned i am here and whenever a child among men by a blow is dead docile foray from the deeps must i lift my head and from the heathen heart of me that breaks the unextinguishable music wakes naught availing naught deterred and the sailor heareth me even as thou alas hast heard fallen in awe upon thy knee tolling and wailing bursting and failing afar in the ominous sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain a schwan by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia a schwan from the school porch at van weaponed the children ran one little voice began lark like ascended treason is on the wing black vows and menacing march boys god save the king alio ended singing with sunny head battle ward straight he led stones for his captain's bed herbs for his diet he and his legion brave trouble enough they gave ere the blues bullets drave them into quiet spared with a few as bold once the storm overrolled alio twelve years old crept from the clamour came when the days were brief to the old desk in grief thumbing anew the leaf of the old grammar kings out rang the chime kings in answered time in his ignoring clime silent he studied till ere his youth was done for him the chosen one shepherd disclaimed of none aaron's rod budded long in unbroken round peace on his path he found saw the glad breton ground husbanded quarried blessed it the record saith all the years he had breath till the dim eighties snowed on his forehead president emperor president on the floor spake a sharp senator widening his ranges from paris i impeach van for disloyal speech send thither troops to teach how the world changes down on the peasants then rode the republic's men trampling the corn again miring the flowers hewed through the rebels nigh scoffed at the women's cry set the tricolor high on the church towers pale in his cot that day dying the pastor lay where still his eye could stray up valleys gleaming watchers were at his side prayer unto prayer replied hush what was that he spied pinnacle streaming nothing was he aware in his deaf breton air so great traditions there throve unforgotten that by a final chance kings all were led a dance long since in fickle france sceptres were rotten sprang the old lion still life with prodigious will to his stone casement sill foolish and true one snatched up the blade he bore rough with its rust of yore kissed it a saint no more only a schwan barred from the charging mass in the choked market pass all he could do alas now was to clang it nay more god save the king with a last clarion ring shot ere he ceased to sing alio sang it end of poem this recording is in the public domain youth by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by phil Schampf. let us hymn thee for our silent brothers freely as the wild impellent wind blows briefly rudely in the smoky pauses of a battle in the stress and scourging of the sail apast thy heavenly margin let us hymn thee 
while the gallant pulses in high heart and limbs one kingliest instant boom and flash thy name and their allegiance once and for one only let us hymn thee o delight o sunrise o soul answer empery unbought supreme adventure youth ah youth all men's desire and sorrow let us hymn thee we the passing dying out of bondage by a vision lifted since by chance sublime in secret places goddess we action like have seen thee though our voice as a spent eagle's voice is let us hymn thee while the doom is forging holding losing through one first last moment one mad moment worth dull life forever triumphing in anguish let us hymn thee thine beholden beauty thine this heartbreak thine o hope forsworn this salutation youth ah youth all men's desire and sorrow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the last fawn by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. how hath he stumbled hither in search of love and praise a tardy comer and goer across the world's highways a kind shape from the thicket a wanderer all his days he finds a rocky seat where the moiling town recedes the altered shepherds flout him but oh he little heeds incredulous he swings there and drones upon his reeds he stamps his cloven heel and he laughs adown the wind with eye that wanes and waxes at doings of mankind slow slow creeps the invader upon that happy mind the apple breasts his fellow doves wheel by two and three and ever dance in circle the shallops on the sea the goats and deer are many but playmate none hath he nor nymph nor child to follow upon his signals rude he smiles there is no frolic he snarls there is no feud he feels his poor heart sinking at every interlude his shaggy ear and freakish resents the wail and din earth's rumours chill his veins with their ghostly gliding in he aches to slip these tethers and be where he hath been elsewhere is waking glory and hear the dream the thrall hush hear the sunless waters the wrestling leaves that call he lops the grass and whistles and while he cheats them all obey is gone gone wholly from alien air too cold the fawn with garlands flying with sylvan ditties trolled being homesick being patient regains his greenwood old end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nights of Weather by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. When down the filmy lanes the too wise sun goes grieving, a wake of splendour leaving up billowed from the ground. When at the window panes the hooded chestnuts rattle, and there is clash of battle, New England's oaks around. Oh, then we nights of weather we birds of sober feather fill up the woods with revel that summer's pomp is slain and make a mighty shouting for king october's outing the saracen october astride the hurricane when dappled butterflies have crept away to cover and one persistent plover is coaxing from the fen when apples show the skies their bubbly lush vermilion and from a rent pavilion laugh down on maids and men oh then we knights of weather we birds of sober feather fill up the woods with revel that summer's pomp is slain and make a mighty shouting for king october's outing 
the Saracen October astride the hurricane. When pricks the winy air, when all the meadows clamber, cloud masonries of amber, when brooks are silver clear, when conquering colours dare, the hills and cliffy places to hold with braggart graces high wassail of the year. O oh, then we knights of weather, we birds of sober feather, fill up the woods with revel, that summer's pomp is slain, and make a mighty shouting for King October's outing, the Saracen October, astride the hurricane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Daybreak by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. The young sun rides the mists anew, his cohorts follow from the sea. Let Aztec children shout and sue, the Persian lend a thankful knee. Those glad auroral eyes shall beam not anywhere henceforth on me. Up with the banners on the height, set every matin bell astir. The tree top choirs carouse in light, the dews on flocks and lavender. Ah, mockery for worlds away, the heart of morning beats with her. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Some Old Music by Louise Emma Jean Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson To lie beside a stream upon the sod at ease While weary shepherds homeward plod And feel benignly by, as daylight mellows The mountains in their weathering period I so with silent shod to lie in depth of grass With man's meek fellows the cattle large and calm, aware of God. And keen as if to flesh the spirit sprang, Oh, but to hear that silvern clang of young hail melody, And hither rally the thrill, the aspiration, And the pang again as once it rang, Sovereign and clear through all the Saco Valley, Whose slaves were we that heard, and he that sang. Happy the spot, the hour, the spanning strain precious and far the rainbows of the rain the seal of patience dark endeavor summing the heavens bright close of pergolese pain sighs bid it back in vain nor when its peer till craftsmen after coming lost art lost heart from shipwrecked years regain how like an angel it effaced the crime the moil and the heat of our tempestuous time and brought from dewier air to us who waited the breath of peace and healing breath sublime as falls at midnight's chime to an old pilgrim plodding on belated the thought of love's remote sunshining prime there flits upon the wind's wing as we gaze our northern springtime virgin green these days the racy water shallowing the glory of jonquil strewn and wafted apple sprays oh let it be thy praise child song too lovely and too transitory thou art as they thy feet have gone their ways o oh, beauty unassailable o oh, bride of memory while yet thou didst abide the yester joy was ours the joy to-morrow life's brimming whole and since to earth denied soft ebbed the dreamy tide to us the first, the full, the only sorrow, wild as when Abel out of Eden died. In the poem, this recording is in the public domain. Late Peace by Louise Amagine Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As a pool beset with lilies in the May green copses hid far from wayfarers and wrongers clangers rumors disillusions neighbored by the wild grape only by the hemlock's dreamy host by the rhodian nightingale o remote 
remote, O oh, lonely, so thy life is. Whence and wherefore is it never peace may be co-dweller with my lakelet, too beloved and too sheltered, that secure from broil of cities, from a secret regnant spring, to its own wild depth awakening, makes but moaning and resistance, undiminishable protest, mimicking with pain and fury of humanity the struggle, fretting, foaming, pacing ever round and round its fragrant cloister, all within itself perplexed, every heart vein bruised but eager, and its clear soul doubt o'erladen, neath the stirred and floating foulness, long abased, long dumb, ah, long, so thy life is. Comes the respite, comes the guerdon, the perfect truce arrives in the honey-dropping twilight, the southwestering pallid sunshine, the magian clouds of fire, the mooring galleon wind, at whose spell potent daily the lulled water is beguiled back to saneness, back to sweetness. All its arrowing, hissing atoms gather from the chase forsaken, the sphered galaxies of bubbles, fragments, motes, the lees unrestful, disunite as to heard music like weird dancers from the wreathings, each to its cool grotto swaying, till there follows on their fervor depth and crystal clarity. So thy life is, so thy life. Darkling to beatitude, shaken in the saving change, and the spirit made wise, not weary, by the throes that youth endureth. When old age falls, evening placid, on the mystery unriddled, yet in empire, yet in honor, in submission not ignoble, listens to a central quiet, leal to the most lovely moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Young Poet by Louise Imogene Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Sigh not to be remembered, dear, nor for time's fickle graces strive. Vex not thy spirit's songful cheer with the sick ardor to survive. But be content, thou quick bright thing, a while than lasting stars more fair, a lone high-flashing skylark's wing across obliterating air. O rich in immortality, not thee fame's graven stones benight, but ever to some world-worn eye, all heaven is bluer for thy flight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. De Mortuis by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. De Mortuis. The skilfullest of mankind. So praise him, reckoning by shot in the seagull's wing by doubts in boyhood's mind end of poem this recording is in the public domain downstream by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia downstream scarred hemlock roots oaks in mail and willow shoots Springs first nighted, clinging aspens grouped between, slender, misty green, faintly affrighted. Far hills behind, sombre growth with sunlight lined on their edges, banks hemmed in with maidenhair, and the straight and fair phalanx of sedges. Wee wings and eyes, wild blue jammy dragonflies fearless rangers drowsy turtles in a tribe diving with a jibe muttered at strangers wren bobolink robin at the grassy brink great frogs jesting and the beetle for no grief half across his leaf sighing and resting in the keel's way unwithdrawing bream at play till from branches chestnut blossoms loosed aloft 
graze them with their soft full avalanches this is very odd boldly sings the river god pilgrim rowing from the hyperborean air wherefore and o oh, where should man be going slave to a dream me no urgings and no theme can embolden now no more the oars swing back drip dip till black waters froth golden muscataquit i have loved thee all unbid earliest longest thou hast taught me thine own thrift here i sit and drift where the wind strongest if furthermore there be any packed ashore i forget it if upon a busy day beauty make delay once over let it only despite thee who wouldst unnerve me quite like a craven best the current be not so heart and eye must row into our haven end of poem this recording is in the public domain the indian pipe by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia the indian pipe to r l s your bays shall all men bring and flowers the children strew you once as i stood in a thick west wood i took from a fissure a precious thing the homage whereof be to you a thing pearl pale yet stung with fire as the morning's beam is hid underground through a solar round hardy and fragile antique and young more exquisite than a dream is no rose had so bright birth no gem of romance surpassed it by a minstrel knight for his maid's delight born from the moon-burned marge of the earth where pain in breakers cast it rude named memorial quaint the dews and the darkness moulded scarce twice in an age is our heritage this glory and mystery without taint dear stevenson do you hold it a text of grace ah much beyond what the praising throngs say only your art is its peer at heart only your touch is a wonder such my wild little loving song says end of poem this recording is in the public domain brook farm by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by melanie t down the long road bent and brown youth that dearly loves a vision ventures to the gates elision as a palmer from the town coming not so late so far rocks and birches for your story nor to prate of vanished glory where of old was quenched a star where of old in lapse of toil time that has for weeds a dower bade the supersensual flower starve in our new england soil but to youth whose radiant eyes shatter mists of grief and daunting lost to glad voices still are chanting neath those unremaining skies still the dreams of fellowship beat their wings of aspiration and a smile of soft elation trembles from his haughty lip if another dare deride hope's heroic snapped and parted disillusion so high-hearted all success is mean beside end of poem this recording is in the public domain my times are in thy hands by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia my times are in thy hands my times are in thy hands it rumbles from the sea it jingles ever inland far 
from the reddening rowan tree let me not sit inert let me not be afraid teach me to dare and to resist like the first mortal maid to whom of fate's dread strength no sickening rumours ran who with whatever grim event grappled as man with man seal to my utmost age what now my youth has known my times are in thy hands o most when wholly in my own end of poem this recording is in the public domain garden chidings by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by melanie t the spring being at her blessed carpentry this morning makes a stem this noon a leaf and jewels her sparse greenery with a bud fostress of happy growth is she but thou o too disdainful spirit or too shy passive dost thou inhabit like a mole the porch elect of darkness for thy trade is underground a barren industry shivering true ardour on the never air shaping the thousandth tendril and all year webbing the silver nothings to and fro what wonder if the gardener think thee dead when every punctual neighbour root now goes adventurously skyward for a flower up laggard climb thine inch thyself fulfil thou only hast no sign no pageantry save these fine gropings soon from thy small plot the seasonable sunshine steals away end of poem this recording is in the public domain Frédéric Ozanam by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Frédéric Ozanam, unto the constant heart whom saints befriend, afar in peace, what were our gaudy praise? His course is ended and his faith is kept. Honor in silence to that memory, sweet, equally in the forum of the schools and in the sufferer's hovel his threefold the lowliness of Esai's chosen son and zeal that fired the warring maccabee about him like a wedding garment worn the day of his acceptance and we know that for the sake of some such soul as this so brave so clean compassionate and just alert in its most meek security love beareth yet with all that stains the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain bankrupt by louise imogene guinea read for librivox dot org by larry wilson past the cold gates a wraith without a name sullen and withered like a thing half tame still for its jungle moaning came by night before the judgment's awful angel came answer immortal at my high decree glory or shame shall flood thee as the sea what of the power the skill the graciousness the star-strong soul the lord hath lent to thee but the lone spectre raised a mournful hand call me not that release me from this land what words are heaven and hell they fall on me as on a sphere the fooled in slipping sand discerning thou the good mayest yet belie by some last test the sinner sanctify my guilt is neutral safe like innocence no boon nor bane of deathless days gain i whose life is hollow shell and broken bowl of all which was its treasury the whole utterly vilely squandered o oh, most just put down thy scales for i 
have spent my soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Reason for Silence by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A Reason for Silence. You sang, you sang, you mountain brook, scarce by your tangly banks held in, as running from a rocky nook you leaped the world the sea to win sun bright past many a foamy crook and headlong as a javelin now men do check and still your course to serve a village enterprise and wheelward drive your sullen force what wonder slave that in no wise breaks from you pulled mid reeds and gores the voice you had in paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain temptation by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia temptation i come where the wry road leads through the pines and the alder sands sated of books with a start sharp on the gang to-day scarce see the romany steeds scarce hear the flap of the tents when hillo my heart my heart is out of its leash and the way gypsies gypsies the whole tattered amalian crew brown and sly and severe with curious trades in hand a string snaps in my soul the one high answer due if an exile chance to hear the songs of his fatherland to be abroad with the rain and at home with the forest hush with the crag and the flower urn and the wan sleek mist upcurled to break the lens and the plain to burn the pen and the brush and clean and alive return into the old wild world how is it o oh, wind that bears the arrow from its mark the sea-bird from the sea the moth from his midnight lamp fate's self thou mocker of prayers whirl up from the mighty dark and even so even me blow far from the gypsy camp end of poem this recording is in the public domain for a child by louise imogen guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk. Schumann's Arena Room, November 4, 1847. In memory of dear Mendelssohn, the loving song I made, fain would I sing for you, my own, but that I am afraid, I truly sore afraid, for sweet as was its every tone once freed to mortal ears in memory of dear mendelssohn the ghostly wand of tears would yet be strong to break my song through all these after years end of poem this recording is in the public domain Agileus by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. the ash hath no perfidious mind the open fields are just and kind though loves betray i hear this way the feathery step of the faithful wind thorn apple bayberry and rose around me talismanic close the frosty flakes the thunder quakes are bulwarks twain of my years repose no struggle no delight no moan but at my hearthstone i have known all thoughts that pass as in a glass the gods have bared to me for mine own wisdom the sought and unpossessed 
hath of her own will been my guest not smoking feud but quietude my hearth hath chosen at her behest this is of men the happiest man who hath his plot arcadian apollo cried my gates beside nor ever wanders beyond its span now like my sheep i seek the fold my hair is shaken in the cold the night is nigh but ere i die bear witness brothers that young and old my name i wear without regret the home-keeper am i and yet at every inn my feet have been above all travellers i am set though ocean currents by me purled the sails of my desire were furled what pilgrims crave three acres gave and i adulaeus have seen the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain. An Auditor by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk Why chide me that mutely I listen? Ah, jester, for either thou knowest too much, Or thou knowest not aught of this aching, vexed planet, down whirling thou knowest thy wit is but fortitude wouldst have me laugh in its presence thou knowest not laugh i can never for innocence also is sacred end of poem this recording is in the public domain the water text by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. watching my river marching overland by mighty tides transfigured and set free my river lapped in idle-hearted mirth made at a touch a glory to the earth and leaving wheresoever falls his hand the balm and benediction of the sea o oh, soon i know the hour whereof we dreamed the saving hour miraculous arrives when ere to darkness winds our sordid course some glad new potent consecrating force shall speed us so uplifted so redeemed along the old worn channel of our lives end of poem this recording is in the public domain cyclamen by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk on me through joy's eclipse and inward dark first fell thy beauty like a star new lit to thee my carol now albeit no lark hath for thy praise a throat too exquisite oh would that song might fit these harsh north slopes for thine inhabiting or shelter lend thy loveliest laggard wing thou undefiled astray of earth's or vanished spring here is the sunless clime the fallen race down our green dingles is no peer of thee why art thou such dear outcast who hadst place with shrine and bower and olive silvery peaked islets in mid-sea thou seekest thine achaean dews in vain and osiered nooks jocose at summer's wane with gossip spirit fine of chill and widening rain 
thou wert among thessalia's hoofy host their radiant shepherd stroked thee with a sigh when falchioned perseus spied the ethiop coast unto his love's sad feet thy cheek was nigh and all thy blood beat high with woodland rhecus at the brink of bliss thy leaf the naiad plucked by thiamis and she the straying maid the bride beguiled of dees these these are gone the air is wan and cold the choric gladness of the woods is fled but thou i dove-like wrapped in memories old inclinest to the ground thy fragile head in ardour and in dread searcher of yesternight how wilt thou find in any dolven isle or cavern blind in any ocean hall the glory left behind june's butterfly poised o'er his budded sweet is scarce so quiet winged betimes as thou fail twilight's thrill and noonday's wavy heat to kiss the fever from thy downcast brow ah cease that vigil now no west nor east thine unhoused vision keeps nor yet in heaven's pale purpureal deeps of worlds unnavigate the dream of childhood sleeps flower of the joyous realm thy rivers lave their once proud valleys with forgetful moan thy kindred nod on many a trodden grave among marmorian altars overthrown for thou art left alone alone and dying duped for love's extreme hope not thy greece is over as a dream stay not but follow her down time's star-lucent stream less art thou of the earth than of the air a frail outshaken splendour of the morn dimmest desire the softest throb of prayer impels thee out of bondage to thy born ere thou art half forlorn farewell farewell for from thy golden stem thou slippest like a wild enchanter's gem swift are the garden ghosts and swiftest thou of them yea speed thy free-born life no doubts debar o blossom breath of that which was delight in cooling whirl and undulation far the wind shall be thy bearer all the night through ether trembling white and i that clung with thee as exiles may whose too slight roots in every zephyr sway thy little soul salute along her homeward way End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Passing Song by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk. Where thrums the bee and the honeysuckle hovers, gather golden lasses to a roundelay, dance dance yoke fellows and lovers headlong down the garden in the heart of may youth is slipping dripping pearl on pearl away dance what if last year winnie's cheek were rounder dance though that foot hal were nimbler yesterday spread the full sail for soon the ship must founder flaunt the red rose soon the canker worm has sway youth is slipping dripping 
pearl on pearl away see the dial shifting hear the night birds calling dance you starry striplings round the fountain spray with its mellow music out of sunshine falling with its precious waters trickling into clay youth is slipping dripping pearl on pearl away end of poem this recording is in the public domain in time by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by bruce Gachuk. her little dumb child for whom hope was none in any mind she watched from sun to sun until three years her mighty faith had run then in an agony of love laid by the bright head from her breast and went to lie neath cedarn shadows and the wintry sky not having for her long desire and prayer one sign from those shut lips so rosy fair it seemed all eloquence must nestle there that day to her near grave through frost and sleet he following from his toys on truant feet cried mother mother joyous and most sweet and as their souls ached in them at the word the father lifted his new-wakened bird with one rapt tear that now at last she heard end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wild ride by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by bruce Gachuk. i hear in my heart i hear in its ominous pulses all day the commotion of sinewy main-tossing horses all night from their cells the importunate tramping and neighing cowards and laggards fall back but alert to the saddle straight grim and abreast vault our weather-worn galloping legion with a stirrup cup each to the one gracious woman that loves him the road is through dolor and dread over crags and morasses there are shapes by the way there are things that appall or entice us what odds we are knights and our souls are but bent on the riding i hear in my heart i hear in its ominous pulses all day the commotion of sinewy main tossing horses all night from their cells the importunate tramping and neighing we spur to a land of no name outracing the storm wind we leap to the infinite dark like the sparks from the anvil thou leadest o god all's well with thy troopers that follow end of poem this recording is in the public